crowded house fans tonight after splitting up earlier this year, the band has decided to regroup for one last gig. As Angela Bishop exclusively reports, Sydney will be the lucky city playing host to the crowded house's farewell to the world concert. You heard it here first. Hey now, hey now, don't do it so after disappointing millions of fans around the world with the news they were breaking up, comes one final chance to see Crowded House live in action. It is our farewell concert on the steps of the Sydney Opera House, and it is a benefit for the Randwick Children's Hospital. And best of all, it's free. The Sydney Opera House stamps will be turned into a giant rock venue for the concert, which will also feature UMI and Powderfinger. The chance to actually play just one more time is, um, you know, I can't resist. And it should be a fitting farewell for the 100,000 plus fans expected to turn out. And it might just be the biggest concert we've ever played. After 10 years of some of the biggest success an Australian band has known, it's now only four days before Crowded House ceases to exist. This is a bit of a, in some ways, a distraction, but it's also a necessary ritual for us to kind of mark the passing of it and be able to rest easy with it. It's a little bit, you know, not to be over dramatic, but it's a bit like a grieving process. You've got to kind of go through various stages of withdrawal. And uh, that's partly why, we, why we're doing this. For me, the reason I left pretty much was I was done traveling. I'm not a good traveler. I've developed a phobia, a fear of traveling. And the other thing was, I kind of wanted the band to do less work, like do six months of work and then six months of a great life, just banging around it. Now that idea didn't really gel with it. You know, I kept trying to get it up, you know, late on the bus, you know, everyone's a bit drunk and stoned. I said, oh, you want to have six months off? Come on. Come on. <laughs> six months off, we're killing it. We'll just do Australian Museum. Yeah. And of course, Grant, you know, would never let that happen, you know. He had four or five properties he had to sell and buy. And stuff. So I was at that stage, the whole thing, you know, that's why I kind of left, really. I didn't see it coming that way, and I was really into developing a lazy, successful life. Well, I, I really believe that we had another studio album in us. We were going towards a certain path that was quite uh, the ultimate stage that we were on when we played live was starting to actually appear on our rec on, on the music that we we're recording. So I was looking forward to a new studio album, but um, you know, it it really comes down to private life. At the end of the day, I mean, Neil says that he's been in a band for 20 years, you know, and that's that's a long time. So. I mean, there's lots of really good ideas that we never got around to doing. We, we, we toyed with the idea of doing a TV show, wanting to develop that side of the band's personality a bit more, and we never got around to doing that. You know, there were certain things that we didn't sort of get to. Great, you know, and some really tragic little ideas that we never did that should, should have, like, the condom with our four heads on the front going like that. <laughs> you know, One of the biggest highlights for me in the band, because I always wanted the band to be the biggest band in the world, um, was when we won the, the best live act at the British Rock Awards in 94 over Nirvana, Pearl Jam, U2 and R.E.M. I think that was the, the, the point where we had the marriage of great songwriting and incredible live, incredible live chemistry and the, and the British were fortunate, we were, we were touring Britain a lot at the time and they were fortunate enough to see that incarnation of the band. And I've got a recording studio, so I'll be bullshitting on about doing a solo album for the next ten years. <laughs> not the girl you think you are. No, no. You're not a shoes under your bed. Yeah, yeah. It'll take you places in his car that you won't forget. No. We could have continued on, um, but a part of me felt that uh, has a kind of a purest view of what a band should be. And, you know, because we started with Paul, Nick and I, um, we were getting to a point where we had to redefine, find a new angle on it. And I sort of thought, well, we're not hanging around in the same town. We're not, Paul's left. He doesn't yeah. want to tour anymore. Yeah. To some extent, it's over. You know, we should recognise the fact instead of trying to... Um, be a band. You can't be a band unless you're hanging about the same town. You get pissed together. Yep. You're. Um, I just don't think there's any bands around that that work otherwise. He's he's timed it beautifully because there's still dignity in our relationship. If it got to the point where there was a, like a marriage that was just starting to fester, 
and you end up hating each other. You know, fortunately, we haven't done that. We're, we're, we're really, you know, keep being really honest to the beauty or you know, the purity of the relationship, I think, by, by recognising our differences now. Sort of. yeah. The boys were a lot driven and kind of more focused than me in the end and really had, had something of being there by they had to chase. And I was sort of just think, thinking, oh, it just seemed really pointless. Well, I might as well tell you, I've decided to break the group up. I can't do it anymore. So, oh, okay. So I understand. Because, I mean, he wasn't, and, you know, he could see it coming. Yeah. We hadn't played together for a year and a half. And yeah. But everyone was really focused, and the rehearsals were great. And, I, and there's a tendency to stand there and go, well, we must be mad. This is a great band. Listen to this, you know. But then you have to remind yourself of the fact that if you weren't breaking up, it would probably be another tedious rehearsal, you know. <laughs> It's a dichotomy, Neil. It's a paradox, Neil. Nick, more fuzz. Dichotomy. Two guitars, no more fuzz. So far in Melbourne, have um, you know, from the first night to the second, there was a big improvement. I think we're performing as well as we ever have. Rehearsals were sensational. I think everybody's completely zoned into it. There may have been different views about whether the band should have broken up, whether this was the right thing to do as the farewell. But now that we're on the, the course, it's kind of a commitment to the task. You know, trying to make it good.
for big shows, but this is one big one, we did this big human pyramid, and Neil got everyone to put their hands up, and it literally went pink, you know, it just looked amazing, you know, from everyone's sort of shirts and hats and that, just, well, all, the colour just got taken out of this mass, and just went pink, it was amazing. Yeah. Those nights were the nights of the crowdies where you could almost step out of your own shoes and watch it, you know, it was on such a roll. Bloody thing was on such a things were just connecting like all over. You know, after a year or two or with the same crew and people getting used to um, things happening. You know, it wasn't like we never really planned anything at all. The long-awaited farewell concert for Supergroup Crowded House has been postponed for 24 hours due to rain. But in the meantime, they've done a special private show in Sydney. The band hasn't been lying idle. As soon as they arrived in town, they went to the Sydney Children's Hospital Randwick, which will benefit from the concert, to perform for kids too sick to get out there tonight. Well, it be somewhere, somewhere like Randwick Children's Hospital on a Friday afternoon.
It was the November rain that poured down on Sydney yesterday that forced the postponement of the big gig. But band members Neil Finn, Paul Hester, Nick Seymour and Mark Hart were on site today, checking everything's in order for when the concert goes ahead at 5pm tomorrow evening. Were you disappointed that you had to postpone? I'm feeling a little bit upset and disappointed for the people who had tickets booked back to other places tomorrow and I'm hoping that most of them can change their, um, their tickets. Otherwise we're going to be doing a sound check at 6 tonight and I'd recommend anybody who can't make it tomorrow to come to sound check. Neil spoke to fans personally, urging those who did have other plans to stay the extra day. Monique Devereaux, who's flown in from New Zealand just for the concert, is one who has a problem. Are you ring my boss? I'll, I'll write a note for you, to your boss. <laughs> I couldn't get the stage ready in time, so tomorrow it is. But anyway, this is a little, um, what do you call this, Paul? What do you call this? I would call this a humble gathering between humans. Any human beings out there? Love you. It's like a VFL football final. We're training for the finals. People are coming down to watch the team train. The only trouble is, I see my throat's really sore, and I'm gonna. If I don't, if I go out there and not sing, it's gonna be like I'll get pelted with missiles. In the hills, we're soft as a pillow. In the castle shadow on my bed. The view, when I look through my window, is an awful piece I'm going to fall in love with every day. by the events that happened and the way that we interacted with the audience, you know. Yeah. It's always, you know, you remember Philadelphia by, oh, that was the guy that got up and we threw off stage, you know. Yeah. Um, the guy that Arlo and I picked up head and shoulders and threw into the audience and the crowd apart and landed on the floor. <laughs> well, did that happen? Unfortunately, yeah. What's your favourite Crown and House song? I think Into Temptation. Right. Why? Well, there's personal reasons why, but I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's become an incredibly emotional song for me, and um, it's sort of one of the few that still give me a chill a bit, you know, when we hit it right. Two nights ago, we played Don't Dream It's Over in, in, at this pub in Melbourne, and in the, the, um, in my, the, the harmony part that I sing the choruses, uh, I just started crying. Well, my favourite song on the best of is Private Universe from listening to it the other day, but it may change, you know, it does change. But I listened to it the other day and for some reason I found that the most enjoyable one on the album. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Fall Your Feet is up there. I love Fingers of Love. Right. Because I get to play the 12 string. Right, I just, right. I just love it. It just sounds so good on stage. We have this really deep thing. Yeah. Starting the song off, Jules is playing the keyboards. Yeah. It just sounds so big on stage. Yeah. I love it. It's got all the elements, you know, everybody sings harmony on it. That's one of my favorites. I don't mean we're really clean, and I mean our necks are clean, and our, we're very well scrubbed. We shower often, and something that you people over there should learn from us down here. <laughs> um, underneath the skin, we're, we're, we're lascivious, lewd, vicious beast, beasts, really. You should see the way we treat our, our loved ones. We're, we're animals. <laughs> I do know somebody that's actually interviewed Neil on four different occasions recently and said he's met four completely different people. Really? Yeah, I'm not telling you that he is. Oh, I'm slightly more bonkers than Nick perhaps, but then he's completely gone in areas that I couldn't even dream of. 
Thank you. Know, you just leave it like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I, I just wish I really do wish that the band could be or could have had the state of mind that we have now. Yeah. Could have had that state of mind five years ago. Be as relaxed about being in a band as opposed to being precious and taking it as seriously as we have because we're incredibly we take the band that or have taken the band extremely seriously right. for, for musicians that are sort of wacky and I you know, friendly you. sort of you know and the, and the and the face that's expressed to the public and i know i've up the ante for myself in a way because really if i wanted to just make you know good records with a the band um you know i would never have broken up crowded house because it's as good a band as i could hope to have and that and that's fear but um, I really wanted to stretch and, um, you know, God damn it, I will. So. I mean, in a way, Nick's right. I mean, we have another good record in us, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> and even the people who hate us can like us now because we're breaking out. <laughs> From the moment the first band Powderfinger took to the stage, it already looked like a full house. But they kept coming. With 70,000 people already in the forecourt, more people kept arriving from Circular Quay. As ambulance crews worked on those affected by the heat and the crush, getting them out became a problem, with crowds blocking all access roads. Still holding back on us, Mark. Step out, baby. 